All right, thanks for joining. Today we're gonna look at some of the powerful 3D rendering tools in Moho to make spheres and columns. As you gathered from that intro, the goal of this demo is to make a ball and stick representation of a molecule in three dimensions. Whether or not you wanna animate science concepts, I think you'll find some of the methods here useful for generating 3D shapes. We're using Moho Pro version 13. Okay, so starting with the new document, the bottom layer is a neutral gray rectangle. First, make the central sphere. So start with the new vector layer. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, choose a, a blue color. And uh, turn the grid on and pull out uh, from the center a circle. So holding down the Shift and Alt keys, we will pull out a circle right at the center of that layer. And we want to convert this to a semicircle, so we'll add the, use the Add Points tool to draw a center line down the middle of the circle. And with the Select Points tool, we'll delete that leftmost point. And then go ahead and delete that left edge. Uh, use the Create Shape tool to establish the closed shape. Okay, now we want to go to the Layer Settings menu and choose uh, 3D options. We're going to use the lathe tool. This tool sweeps out a 360 degree arc to create a 3D object based on the selected shape. So a semicircle will make a sphere. And let's turn off some of these options here. And we're going to use uh, smooth shading and apply and OK. So there we go. There's our sphere. So let's hide the sphere for now. Now we want to create the rods or the elongated columns that will attach to the central sphere. So let's go ahead and create a new layer, call it Rod 1. And let's choose a gold color for this. And make another circle from the center of the sphere holding down the Alt and Shift keys. And now we want to convert this circle into a column. So we'll go to the Layer Settings, select 3D Options, and this time we're going to select the Extrude instead of the Lathe. So the Extrude tool pulls out a 3D shape adding volume in the Z axis, so a circle becomes a column. And we don't see any changes yet because we're still looking at the column end on. Now let's adjust this, uh, make it a little bit longer, so adjust the uh, length and the z-axis to about 2.5 and let's turn it end on by about 90 degrees and let's make it a little thinner so let's adjust the x and y scale to about 0.4 and we want to go ahead and duplicate this layer and we want to place these two rods end to end so uh, move rod 1 in the x-axis by plus 0.25 and move rod the other rod by about minus 0.25. There'll be some overlap of these two rods. That's okay. So now we want to move these rods or bonds into the correct angle. So I have a little schematic showing what this is going to look like. We know based on crystallography that the angle between the bonds should be about 109.5 degrees. We know from plain geometry that these three bonds have to add up to 180 degrees. So using simple math, one rod has to be rotated down from the horizontal by 35.25, and the other one rotated down by minus 35.25 degrees. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So minus 35.25 and the other one plus 35.25, and now we have them at the correct angle with respect to each other. Let's place these both in a group layer. And on the group layer, let's use the origin tool so, so that the center of the layer is right at the point where those two bonds connect, right at that joining spot. And let's unhide the sphere for now and move the group layer in the y-axis holding down the shift key so that the ends of the rods are centered on that sphere. We can look at the um, center of the sphere. We can hide that sphere layer for the, for the moment, and we can see that the center of that sphere is right where those two rods connect. So that's exactly what we want. 
Good. So let's go ahead and uh, duplicate that group layer. And let's go ahead and flip that layer vertically. And using the XY rotation tool, uh, rotate it in the Y axis by 90 degrees. And let's use the orbit tool to take a look at what we have. OK, so now we have a tetrahedron. So that's exactly what we want. These four rods are connected in the middle. We can unhide that sphere. So now we want to make four copies of that sphere and place them at the ends of the rods. So let's uh, select that blue sphere. And let's go ahead and label that atom one. Let's change, change that to a green color. Good. OK, so holding down the Alt key to maintain the dimension, let's resize the sphere to be about 60% the size of that central sphere. So that's about right. And let's make three copies of that. Uh, so we'll have one for each rod. And we'll just pull those apart for now. And now what we want to do is squarely place the atoms at the end of their bonds. So it's just like pushing a gumball into the end of a toothpick. Just push that right up on the end, just so it's penetrating the layer. And now we want to create a new uh, group layer and place everything but the two unattached spheres in the groups. So let's pull those two unattached atoms out and let's put everything else into one group. And we want to rotate that group by 90 degrees using the XY rotation tool. Yeah, so now we can see where we have to put these other two spheres. So again, we just push that right on the end just so it's penetrating the layer of the green sphere right in the middle. And then let's group all of these things together into one, uh, one layer. And let's label this methane. Why not? OK, great. So now we can use the Layer Adjust tool to move our molecule uh, left and right. Yeah. So we can see that we're getting some of the parallax effects because it's a 3D shape. And that's exactly what we want to see. OK, great. So now we're ready to animate. So starting in frame one, uh, let's place our molecule at the upper left. And then at frame 48, let's have this bounce off an invisible wall at the bottom of the frame. And a 96, frame 96, it's going to rebound off that right-hand side. And then at frame 144, we'll have to go back to the beginning. So let's copy that keyframe uh, at, at frame 1 and just paste that in at 144. And I'm going to apply a linear interpolation so that it looks like it's bouncing around. Just makes it look a little bit snappier. And let's take a look at what that animation looks like. So it's bouncing around the inside of our box. OK, that looks OK. But we know that in reality, molecules are spinning and rotating around. So let's add some rotation to this. So using the XY rotation tool at frame 48, add 90 degrees X rotation and 70 degrees Y rotation. And then at frame 96, keep going in that same direction. Keep it rotating around. And at frame 144, we need to be uh, back where we started. You may want to set all the interpolations to linear to give it a more snappy appearance. OK, let's take a look at what we have now. Yeah, that looks pretty reasonable. A molecule bouncing around, spinning inside of an invisible box. 
Okay, so today we looked at the lathe and extrude 3D tools to make spheres and columns, and then applied this to making a ball and stick model. I hope you found this video useful and can possibly use some of these tools in your next project. For ScienceSketch.com, thanks a lot for watching. Keep inventing, keep discovering, and keep animating. I'll see you later.